Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here with New Life Pentecostal Church in Albany, Georgia. Today we're going to be talking about a very much misunderstood subject on blasphemy. Blasphemy. And this is, in a general sense, it's speaking evil of deity. In a Christian sense, in a Bible sense, it would be speaking evil of the one true and living God. But even more specifically than that, now, blasphemy has some nuances in the Word of God. Um, we're all acquainted with the scripture that if you commit blasphemy that you can never be saved. This was really highlighted a few years ago. The uh, Rational Response Squad came out with the Blasphemy Club and the Blasphemy Challenge. They had thousands of young people. Oh, it was so pitiful seeing 7th, 8th graders getting on YouTube and saying they blasphemed the Holy Ghost and all of this. It's so pitiful. And saying, I repudiate my right to ever be saved. And I think it continues on to this day. And if you did a certain amount, you'd actually get a, uh, I think at one point, a James Cameron video who did Titanic, you know, uh, in, in uh, another video, the God who isn't there, and just crazy stuff like that. So what is blasphemy? Are those people that participated in the blasphemy club, are they eligible for salvation? How could Paul, in 1 Timothy 1.13, say he was a blasphemer, but yet be saved? If, well, if you're a real blasphemer, that uh, you cannot be saved. Well, the first thing we have to see is, is it's the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, the work of God. And actually, contextually, where this famous statement is found in Matthew, it's what had happened is the Pharisees were attributing the works of God to the devil or to Beelzebub, the God of the flies, you know, it is. But uh, let's look at that in context. Matthew 12, 31 says, wherefore. So whatever you see when you're doing hermeneutics, Bible interpretation, when you see wherefore, you know this is predicated on something that happened in the past. What happened in the past in this context? It says in verse 22, it says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Then Jesus, in verses 25 through 30, goes on to say that, uh, you know, kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. He goes on to explain that is the context of the wherefore of Matthew 12, 31. Then it says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. For whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So it's easy to see that it's attributing the works of God to the devil. And so Jesus, he was a Holy Spirit in flesh, very good oneness passage. He was both the Son of Man, Son of God, God in flesh, the Father in flesh. And so he was the Holy Spirit in flesh. God is a spirit, a singular Holy Spirit. God is a one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, one spirit, one hope of your calling. Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, not in order there. But uh, so it's very easy to see that he's saying, you're saying that I'm casting out devils by Beelzebub. You're on dangerous ground because if you're saying that I, I'm the Shekinah in flesh, if you're attributing my works to Beelzebub, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, you could never be saved. Now some people say, is that a one-time act? Or is it if you are so confused that you think that the works of God are really the works of the devil, that you couldn't be saved either way. Well, actually, that's up to God to decide. God is the one who wrote this scripture through inspiration. And so it is an obvious fact that if somebody's going around doing miracles through the power of the Holy Ghost and somebody thinks that's of the devil, well, then they're not going to be saved. But maybe they'll eventually get to where they can understand that it's of God. Now, Paul, classic example. He was furious against the early church, but we never have a record of him saying that the early church was of the devil. But he obviously thought they were in error, 
in some grave point to be able to go in and casting men and women into prison, you know. And uh, I think it actually says causing them to, to repudiate or to blaspheme and all of this kind of thing. So obviously he thought the early Christians were in error, but then all of a sudden he gets saved. So I want to say those that were just repudiating the Holy Spirit work in their life and felt they were blaspheming the Holy Ghost, in a certain nuance of that word, they would have been blaspheming the Holy Ghost. But in an eternal sense, no, I think they can be saved. I think that God's Spirit, His work, loves them. It says He draws all men unto Him, uh, that God will save them. And another thing, it, it seems from the context, these, the Pharisees, were people who were studied, who should have known the one true and living God, who should have been saved according to the plan of salvation of the day through the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, through John's baptism and stuff. So there is a distinct possibility that the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost in this context is reserved to believers and that when believers that have once tasted of the good word of God according to Hebrews chapter 6 and then repudiate it, then they are born unto thorns, unto briars, and then they cannot be saved. I'm not talking about backsliders. How many backsliders say, I know I'm wrong. If I ever go back to church, I'm going back to the apostolic church. I know those people are right. But I think it's those that totally repudiate truth, Acts 2.38, the gospel of Jesus Christ, say that was of the devil, and go into something else. Something happens to them, and they enter into the realms of blasphemy. Of course, there's many sub uh, subjects here. There's many contexts, rabbit trails we could go into, but I hope this little presentation gives you a better understanding, first of all, of what blasphemy is, and second of all, if you've ever done that blasphemy challenge, don't let Satan torment your mind. You can repent of your sins. You can get the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name. You can be ready for heaven. God bless you. Talk with you later.